This recipe is brought to you by LG Canada, and we'll hear more from them later in the episode. Welcome to Baking Wisdom. This is my series based on my newest cookbook of the same name. In it, I share over 150 recipes and loads of baking tips. The idea? To make you a better baker. Now, today's recipe is a savory bake. I am making a leek and cheese quiche. Oh, so delectable, but it all starts with that buttery pie pastry. And I have got that down and I want you to own your pie pastry. So it starts with my all-purpose flour. I already have measured in the mixer. I do add a little bit of sugar. The idea of the sugar is not to sweeten the pie pastry, but to help shorten the protein that brings the pie pastry together. So it, it helps make it just that little bit more tender. I bake with unsalted butter, so that way I control the salt. In this case, you do need a fair bit. Even if you're making a fruit pie, you need a full teaspoon of salt. A good pie pastry recipe can be used for savory baking and sweet. And that's why you won't even taste the sugar in this recipe. Now I'll give this a little mix. Here's a little bit of baking wisdom. My secret ingredient, before I add the butter, I coat the flour with three tablespoons of vegetable oil. You can use canola, grapeseed, sunflower, I leave that up to you, but the idea is that helps coat the flour so when you add the water at the very end, you won't overhydrate the flour. We're not making bread dough after all, we're making pie pastry. I'll mix in that oil and you won't see any visible difference but just give it about 30 seconds in the mixer. I should mention, if you don't have a stand mixer, you can make this recipe just as easily by hand. You just use a pastry cutter or two butter knives to work in all of your ingredients. Now I'm ready for my butter. It's 225 grams or a full cup. I've diced it up and guess what? I don't put it in the freezer. It doesn't come ice cold from the fridge. What I have learned is to just relax when it comes to making pie dough. And so I dice up my butter and let it sit out for a few minutes. Of course, you have to take in the ambient temperature into consideration. On a hot summer day, just let it sit out for 10 minutes. If it's a cold wintry day, well, it can sit out for 20 minutes or longer. I find that using slightly softened butter allows the butter to work in more evenly and faster. So you're less at risk of over mixing your pie dough. It is worth mentioning that if you want to make your pie dough in the food processor, well, that's the one exception where you want to use ice cold butter because the friction of the blade will actually warm up your dough so quickly and soften that butter that you don't need to let it sit out before you make your dough. So I'm just letting those pieces of butter work into the flour a little bit. You still want to be able to see the pieces of butter, but when the flour starts turning a butter yellow color, that's when you know you've mixed it in enough. It just takes the time it takes. There we go. That flour has taken on a butter yellow tone and even though there are still some pieces of butter visible, they've got a shaggy texture to them. So once you add the water and lemon juice, then you know they're going to break down further and end up being these flat little layers of butter and that will help make your pastry flaky. I've already got my quarter cup of cool water measured. It doesn't have to be ice cold either because neither is the butter. And I have two teaspoons of lemon juice. That little bit of lemon juice, or you can use white vinegar, is key because it's about the acidity. The acidity connects with the proteins in the flour and makes those protein strands more elastic. So you can roll out your pie pastry easily. It'll stay in place and keep those butter layers distinct so you end up with a flaky yet tender pastry. I add it all at once and then just mix until the dough comes together. It always takes longer when you're staring at it. And there it is, pie dough. Now this is nice and soft, easy to handle, but not suitable for rolling at this point. You always need to give your glutens, the proteins in the flour, time to relax. What I'll do is divide it in two. This is a double crust recipe, so you have enough to make for a fruit pie. 
base, and top. You need to give the dough time to chill. Now, one disc I can pop in the freezer and just thaw it in the fridge to use for another day. This disc I'll pop in the fridge and you wanna give it about two hours to chill. It resets the butter and it also relaxes the proteins in the flour. So that way you have an easier time rolling it and your pie shell will hold its shape. I'll wrap these up and chill them down. I've got my chilled dough ready to go. And guess what? Just like the butter that you use to make the pie pastry, your pie dough itself, you can pull from the fridge a few minutes before you want to roll it. You can't knead the dough to soften it. You want to go from its shape. We don't want to exercise those proteins in the flour too much. So from its original disc shape, I'm gonna start rolling. And because it is a thicker piece and cold, I start with small motions back and forth and keep rotating your dough as you roll. That way you know it's not sticking. Gentle at first. When you're rolling your dough, the pressure is always coming from the top, and sometimes a crack can develop underneath, you don't even see it. So give your dough a flip a couple of times as you're rolling. Still rotate that dough as you roll. Flip. You're looking for the dough to be about a quarter inch or just less than quarter inch, so about six millimeters thick. You can make your quiche in a pie plate if you wish. I've got a fluted tar pan with a removable bottom, so I'll sprinkle a little flour on the bottom, lift the dough, and then really take advantage of the fluted edge because that will lock the dough in place. Push it right into that corner. And you can just use the top of your thumb to cut off the excess pastry, or you can use your rolling pin like so. But because that presses down the dough, you wanna take a moment and just check that the dough is pushed into the fluted edge. There we go, this is looking good. All right, before I pop this back in the fridge, I'll just dock the pastry with a fork. We've got to pre-bake this crust before we put in the quiche filling. We don't want that egg mixture to seep into the pastry. I dock the pastry because that way, when we blind bake it, it leaves room for expansion so you don't end up with a big dome or bubble on the bottom of your pastry. So guess what? Now it's time to chill this dough. Remember, anytime you move the dough, you're exercising the proteins in the flour. We wanna reset the butter, let the proteins relax. So just about 20 minutes in the fridge. tart shells nicely chilled and it's time to blind bake it. So what that means is we have to fake out a filling. If I were to just bake this shell like this, the sides would shrink right down to the bottom of the shell and you would get bubbles and it would be uneven. We basically have to make the tart shell think it has a filling and that means we'll weigh it down. So I put two pieces of foil or you can use parchment. curl it around, and you have the option. You can use dried rice, you can use dried beans. If you bake a lot of pies, you can buy pie weights for it. I have recently learned that using just regular granulated sugar works absolutely fine. It's heavy, it doesn't liquefy in the oven, and I use it over and over and over again. So I keep my blind baking sugar separate. And even after enough uses, it might caramelize a little bit just adds more flavor to your other baking. So I give it a little shape, so that way it fills in every gap. This is ready for the oven. I've preheated it to 375 on pro-bake convection. Bake the shell for 20 minutes. That leaves us with a little time to hear from our sponsor. This recipe is brought to you by LG Canada, featuring LG Counter Depth Max refrigerators. Check out this clip to see how to max out your space and style.
functionality and innovation in kitchen design thanks to LG. Now, back to the recipe. That tart shell should be done now, so I'll pull it out of the oven. Oh yes, looking nice. And there we go. Golden brown at the edges, lightly browned at the bottom, but remember, this tart shell is going back in the oven with its filling. Now here is a great tip. If you ever made a tart shell, blind baked it, put in your filling, and only to find that the filling makes the bottom of the crust go soft? Well, if you blind bake your pastry, take it hot from the oven, brush it with a little egg white. The heat from the hot shell cooks the egg white on the surface, and that creates a nice waterproof barrier that will keep your filling from seeping in too soon. While I let this cool, it's time to cook the leeks for the quiche filling. I've got three leeks that I've trimmed off the dark green parts and diced it. And what I did was I chopped my leeks and then gave them a rinse in a colander. That gets any excess sand out of them. They're nice and clean, drained, and ready to saute in a little bit of butter. You want to melt the leeks. So just like melting butter, think of softening them without adding any color. So medium heat is best. I love the flavor of leeks in a quiche. It's elegant and perfumey and milder than just using regular onion. It's time to add the seasoning now that my leeks are nicely softened. This is optional, but you can add about half a cup of white wine. Oh, oh, it smells so good. If you want to leave the white wine out, you just leave it out. You don't have to replace it with anything. In addition to that, I add a little bit of nutmeg and salt and pepper. Just about a quarter teaspoon. Half a teaspoon of salt. About a quarter teaspoon of pepper or a little extra. If you've added the white wine, you wanna cook it down until the liquid has evaporated. It just takes a couple minutes more. All right, this is looking good. Here we go. My leeks are nicely softened. I'm gonna take them off the heat. I want to cool down the leeks before I put them in the tart shell. And here's a great trick to cool anything down quickly. First, grab a bowl with some ice and cold water. There we go. I'll grab my leeks, and you don't put the leeks in the ice water, but you put them into another bowl. And you drop that into your bowl of ice water. And that cold water is quickly going to cool these leeks, so in a matter of seconds, I'll be filling that quiche and popping it in the oven. While the tart shell and leeks cool, let's hear from our sponsor. This recipe is brought to you by LG Canada and the LG InstaView refrigerators with Kraft Ice. And here it is. LG's exclusive Kraft Ice Maker produces slow melting round Kraft Ice for better taste. Give your beverages the perfect ice for next level entertaining. From Kraft cocktails and whiskey to soft drinks, lemonade, and even iced coffee. And to get more Kraft Ice, activate Kraft Ice Plus in the ThinQ app to make slow melting ice twice as fast. Raid the fridge without losing your cool. InstaView refrigerators have a sleek glass panel that allows you to see inside the easy access door without letting the cold air out. Simply knock twice on the glass to illuminate the contents within. This versatile full convert drawer gives you refrigerator or soft free space when you need it. With four temperature settings, it adapts to your needs, giving you flexibility to store a range of foods from meats to fresh produce, cold drinks, or cooking ingredients. Save money, save energy. When your refrigerator uses 20% less energy than required by federal standards, well, that's gonna make an impact on your energy bill, your energy consumption, and most importantly, on the environment. Sustainable, practical, and beautiful, 
the LG InstaView refrigerator with craft ice will be your favorite tool in the kitchen. The leeks have cooled, I've got eggs, now I need my cream and cheese. The filling for the quiche is straightforward. I've got two eggs and I've got a mix of whipping cream and half and half. That way it's not overly rich. I really like my quiche to be about the filling. That's why I have so many leeks and of course a lot of cheese. First I'll crack my eggs into a bowl. And it's always a good idea to whisk the eggs first before you add your creams. It just makes for easier blending. I've got half and half, so 10% cream. And whipping cream, 35%. Since I added my salt and pepper to the leeks as they were cooking down, I don't have to add any additional salt. And of course, there is the salt from the cheese. I don't mix my fillings into the egg mixture and put it into the quiche. I put the filling into the tart pan first and then I top it with the cheese. I've put my quiche pan onto a baking tray now just because once you add the eggs, it gets a little trickier to move around. It's easier to put the fillings into the quiche shell and then pour the egg over top. That way you can really distribute both the leeks and the cheese evenly. I really like my quiche to be about the filling. The egg just holds it together. And now for the cheese, I'm using Gruyere, which has a beautiful melting property and an intense flavor. You can use other cheeses, like Asiago would work well. Any cheese that melts well, but also has a great taste to it. Oh, aren't you just hungry for quiche now? Now you carefully want to pour the egg cream mixture. Give it a second to fill in the gaps in between the little leek pieces and the cheese pieces. The quiche bakes at 400 degrees for 15 minutes. Then I turn the oven down to 350 and let it bake for another 20 minutes until the cheese is all melted and golden brown and the eggs are set. Oh yeah, look at that. Oh, doesn't that look delicious? I know it's mostly about the cheese, but I do love the leeks in there as well. So while it's hot, let's slide it out of its pan carefully. Mmm. Get a side salad ready if you want. Oh, that combination of that creamy filling, the melted cheese, all those leeks, and then that buttery pastry. Oh, look at all those leeks. Of course, if you wanted, you could put in ham or bacon, mushrooms, so long as you cook your filling first. That way, all you're doing now is melting the cheese and setting the eggs. But I've got a nice, crispy, flaky pastry all the way down. Woohoo! Mm, I've got that cheesy bit right there. It's got my name on it. Mm. Oh, yeah. There's a reason Gruyere is the best cheese for quiche. With a little bit of baking wisdom, making a quiche is not that complicated. I want you to enjoy the baking process as much as the end result. Thank you for joining me for another episode of Baking Wisdom, and I'll see you again soon.